now what we get to do is Bill Knox Stripe functionality, which is going to let you have users on your marketplace book a room through um, through the booking page, and we're gonna send the money to the host, whoever owns that listing, but then the marketplace itself, we're gonna take a percentage of that um, of that booking. And this is key functionality that's going to allow you to build just about any type of marketplace through Bubble. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So the first thing that we wanna do is let's go ahead and create a new page. And it's going to be a settings page. And the idea here is it's gonna be a settings page for the, um, for the user, for the signed in user. And on this page, what we're gonna do is uh, have a button to register as a seller. So let's go and go to a button here and let's drag that over. And then let's just go ahead and click say register as seller. And then what you're gonna do is go to your plugins here. And I have the Stripe plugin installed already. So if you don't just go ahead and click add plugins, search for Stripe and just go ahead and install the Stripe plugin there, the one made by Bubble. And then once you do that, you're going to have to go ahead and make a Stripe account. And if you already have a Stripe account, you can use that for testing, but in any case, you're going to have to have a Stripe account to connect to Bubble. So I'm gonna go ahead to go, to, go ahead and go to Stripe and you do the same. Okay, so here I am, I'm creating a new uh, account here to test called No Code MBA Bubble Test. And for you, when you create your account on Stripe, you're gonna have to go through and add in uh, your address, business details, um, bank details, things like that. So just go ahead and do it. It's a little annoying, you have to go through and go through this whole process, but you need a Stripe account in order to process payments. And you need to go through this process even when you're just using Stripe's test account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on my end. Um, and you can go ahead and do it on yours. And when you get to the end, um, I'll show you what to do next to connect it to Bubble. And here, once you get to business de details, um, just select whatever industry, I would go ahead and go with software. Business website, you'll see that it says you can share an app link store or a business social media profile. So just go ahead and share like your LinkedIn profile here for now if you don't have a website yet that you're working on. And then for description, uh, you can just say that you are building out a uh, marketplace um, really whatever you want here that kind of makes sense for uh, what you're testing out and I'm just gonna go through real quick so under fulfillment details um, I just selected one day um, and it's just a test account and you can change this later on um, under support details that's just more information about yourself you do need to connect a bank account as well um, in order to use stripe so just go ahead and connect your bank account under tax calculation this is optional so I'm just gonna say not right now and I'm also gonna just say not right now for climate contribution. And then when you get to the summary, just go ahead and click submit. Okay, so here we are in our um, test account for Stripe. And I know that was a little bit uh, tedious to go through, but once you have this account, you're gonna be able to use it for anything you're building in Bubble or anything you're building in other no-code tools as well. So what we wanna do is go ahead and first, let's go and turn test mode on. Um, and you'll see it might ask you to verify your tax information, but when you click that, you'll see that um, for the first seven days, they actually don't require you to enter this in. Um, you can enter it in if you want, but since we're just testing, it's not really necessary. Um, and then uh, test mode is when you can, um, you'll see data coming in from, you'll see well, as we keep building that uh, money can come in, but it's just testing, so no money is actually moving. And then live mode is when you're actually, you know, live and people are using their credit cards to purchase. So let's go to test mode and then go ahead and click developers. So here under developers, what we're gonna do is go ahead and click API keys. And here we have our publishable key and our secret key. And if you click under um, not viewing test data, here we're gonna see live data. So we have our live publish publishable key, our live secret key, and then our test publishable key and our test secret key. So uh, these are four different keys. So test and, and live are different. 
And then what we're going to do is go over into Bubble and add these API keys into the Stripe Bubble plugin. So go ahead back to Bubble. And here we are in our uh, plugin page. Click on Stripe, and you can see it's asking for some information here. So it's asking for our live secret key, live publishable, publishable key, our development secret key, our development publishable key, client IDs, and I'll show you how to get that as well. You can enter an, an image for the Stripe checkout. Um, the name for Stripe checkout here, I'm just going to go ahead and type in no code MBA marketplace demo. You can do whatever you'd like there. And I'm going to go ahead and select checkout v3, which is recommended in the newest version. And then I'm not going to check to collect the user's address. Um, and that's just optional for, for you if you'd like to. And now I'm going to show you where to get this information. So here, if we go back to our API keys, um, you're going to see there is a publishable key and a secret key. You want to keep these keys, um, really uh, protect them and treat them like passwords because they're really a password and it says it's a key, but a key really means password um, in APIs. So um, especially your secret key, but your publishable key as well, you want to keep protected. So this, we're in test data, publishable key, I'm just going to click it, go to our bubble editor, editor and then our publishable key development. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in and I'm gonna do the same thing for the secret key. Um, and then I'm going to also go ahead and uncheck to view live data and do the same thing here. So here's the publishable key for live. And then I'm gonna go and click reveal uh, secret key as well for both live and um, for test. And one thing that you'll see is when you click reveal live key, Stripe is going to say you can only reveal it once. So uh, you can save this secret key in some place safe. Uh, if you ever lose it or something uh, goes wrong, you would have to create a new secret key and update all of your API settings in Bubble. Okay, so you've entered in all that information uh, with the API keys for the publishable and secret keys on live and test. And then what we wanna do is go ahead and click connect here on the top. And what Connect does is it allows you to build out a marketplace. And uh, so we need to use Stripe Connect to build out a marketplace. If you were just collecting normal payments, like one-off payments or a subscription payment uh, for software that you were selling, you wouldn't have to use Connect, but in our case, we do. So what we need to do is go ahead and click Get Started here. And we're gonna say we are a platform or marketplace. And here we go. So we need to kind of go ahead and fill out this information. So we need to complete our platform profile and go ahead and select the industry. So in our case, let's just say travel. Um, these are also things uh, that kind of just helps you um, get set up with uh, Stripe Connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And uh, continue, just blocked by my face down there. Where do customers purchase products or services? And here, let's just go ahead and say from your seller services, provide a dedicated page within your platform's website or app. That's kind of what we're doing with an Airbnb clone. Whose name is listed on the transaction on a customer's credit card? And like it says, you can change this later, but we're going to go ahead and select um, the name, our platform's name here. Who should they contact if they have a dispute or a complaint? Let's just say our platform for now. And let's just go ahead and click submit. Okay, awesome. So let's go back to connect here at the top. And uh, we don't have to do that, that now. What I wanna do is get our client IDs. So to do that, just go up at the top and click on the settings button and then go to connect settings and then go all the way down and what we want to do is find our client id so here's a client id here uh, and then if we go to test mode we can see our test client id so let's just go ahead and i'm going to copy the test mode client id and paste that in to my uh, bubble uh, plugin and then also do the same for the live mode client id Okay, so I went ahead and did that and pasted those all in. And then go ahead and just make sure on both live and test data here, so live and test, click back and forth. We wanna turn on OAuth for standard accounts, so it's on here, and then we wanna add a URL here for redirect URL, 
and you want it to be this exact URL, which is https colon forward slash forward slash bubble dot io slash post stripe off. And I'm going to go ahead and you can see on live, we have the exact same thing, OAuth for standard accounts is on, and our URL is uh, set here. And just make sure you do that. This URL redirect is going to send us back to our bubble app uh, after someone registers as a seller or we um, someone purchases. This is a couple things that uh, tricked me up when I was first building out on Bubble. So uh, if you set these up, you're going to be set up for success. All right, so we have all that set up and we are starting to be in good shape here. So let's go back to our Bubble app. And now we're finally ready to get back to this button we created, which is register as a seller. So what we wanna do is go ahead and click start edit workflow. And when it's clicked, we're gonna add an action and you're gonna go to payment. Payment, this is connected to that Stripe plugin we just um, set up. And what we're going to do is find the register the user as a seller. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. The email is current user's email. Go ahead and we can leave the rest blank for now. And we're just gonna register them as a seller with their email. Okay. And then let's go back to our designer. And I want to add a little check to see if the user is registered. So I'm going to add a text element, drag it below, and I'm just going to say successfully registered or registered as a seller. And the conditional is going to be when the current user. Uh, the current user's Stripe seller account ID, and that is included in the um, Stripe uh, plugin. And we're gonna say it is not empty. And the Stripe seller account ID is not in your database, although we can add it, and we might work with that in the database in the future. But for right now, because we have that Stripe plugin, it's gonna use the email of that current user and match it to our Stripe email here. So when it's not empty, what we're going to do is change it. We're going to say the element is visible. We're going to go to appearance. And by default, we're going to say it is um, not visible by default. So on page load, it's not going to be visible. OK, I'm going to do one more thing. Let's go ahead, add in our um, header here, and just drag it in. We just want to do this to enable that um, sign up or login functionality. And now I'm gonna go ahead and um, preview our app. And here we are, we have the register as a seller button, sign up or log in. And the first thing I wanna show you is if we click this button, it's gonna say you must be logged in first before you can register to sell through Stripe, which is why I have that sign up button there. So just go ahead and sign in here. I'm just gonna create an email Just make a password real quick. And I'm going to, oops, I think I sign up. And here we go, I'm logged in. And we can see that text we created with the conditional of are you registered as a seller is not uh, listed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click register as seller. And here we are. Um, so we know it's working because it sent us to this register as seller button. It says we're currently in test mode, which is correct. And what we want to do is select the account. And what it's going to say is select the account you like to connect. And we can choose an account we've already kind of created here um, that's attached to our account, or we can create a new account. Um, if you create a new account, you're going to go through this same process that you did in terms of setting up all of the uh, you know, business information that we did earlier. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and select one of these uh, test accounts that I have. I'm going to go ahead and click connect. And now it's going to redirect me back to the app. And the reason it did that is because we um, uh, did that redirect URL. And now here we are, it says registered as, and now here we are, it says registered as a seller here, which is exactly what we want. And I'm just going to show you if we open this up in a private window here uh, and I'm not logged in, it is now not going to um, show that.
so it's all working. And now let's go back to Stripe. So then if you go back to Connect and we go to our connected accounts, we can see there's two accounts here. I'm just going to go ahead and click on one. Uh, two is the one of the earlier ones is from when I was testing earlier. And here we go. So it has, um, it's connected, it's complete, and this is the account that we just connected. So now if we go back to our Bubble app, we can see that it's registered as our seller because the conditional is working. Okay, so now that we've set up functionality to register users as a seller on the platform, I want to go ahead and let's go ahead and on this dashboard page, the settings page, let's create a form that's going to allow them to create a listing, a rental property. So to do this, let's just go ahead and add some input form. So first we'll create one, it's going to say um, uh, listing title. And then let's add a search box below. And this is what we do for an address. So we're going to go ahead and say, um, address, and it's going to be a geographic place. And then let's go ahead and add a, for now, let's just do listing title address. Let's go ahead and do a drop down here. And the drop down is going to be a dynamic choice. And the type of choice is going to be um, let's do guests. And the source is going to be all guests. And the option caption is going to be current options display. And number of guests is going to be here. So we have a title address and number of guests. And then let's go ahead and add an input. Let's add it below and let's say placeholder price per room. And let's go ahead and um, have it be a number here, integer. Okay. Price per room is going to be integer, guests, address, title. And you would add in more information about a listing, but in our case, I just want to get the functionality working of setting up payments for now. We can always add in more information about the listing later on. And let's go ahead and add a button. And I want it to say, create listing. And let's go ahead and start a workflow there. So we're going to go to data and create a new thing. And it's going to be a uh, home here. And let's go ahead and set a field. So the title is going to be the input listing titles value. The address is going to be the search box addresses value. The price is going to be the input price per room. It really should say night, but that's fine. I'll just update that later. So price and then guests, let's go ahead and say uh, drop down number of guests value. Uh, oops, just the display. Okay, and one thing I realized we need to update is uh, we need to go to our option set. And what you're going to want to do in your option set, I realized that I didn't do this when we first created the option set, is we have our display attribute for guests here, which is, um, you know, one, two, three, four. But we also have to actually make it a number. So just go ahead and create a new attribute there. And it's going to be a guest number and the type is going to be a number. So that's what's important. You can go ahead and create that. So now you can see we have our guest number, which is a number type. And I'm going to modify the attributes to uh, one and then just match it to the display there. And it's because data types, uh, if it's looking for a number, but it sees a text uh, data type, then it won't work when we are uh, putting creating our thing. So let's go back to our design tab here. And let's just go ahead and create our listing. Oops, click on create listing, edit the workflow. And we're going to create a new home. And I'm going to set a field. So I'm going to start with max guests. And it'll be the drop down number of guests value guest number. So there we go. So it works because it's a number field. And now let's go ahead and add the address, which is the search box addresses value. I'm going to do the same for title. And then I'm going to do the same for price, which is going to be the input price per rooms value. It should say price per night, but that is just because I named it price per room by accident. 
But there we go, that's gonna create a new home. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reset the relevant values so it's gonna clear out that, um, that form. I'm gonna go back to designer, just under price per room. I'm gonna change that to price per night. And that'll automatically update in the workflow. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and let's just add a quick repeating group right below here. And it'll be a home repeating group. The content is gonna be homes. And the we're gonna do a search for homes where the created by equals current user. And let's just add a little text box up here. So what that's gonna do is create a repeating group of homes and it'll be my listings. And then if I go to that repeating group and add a quick little link um, and drag that in, and it's gonna be in that repeating group, so now each um, row has the same thing. And let's just insert dynamic data, current cells, homes, title. And then the destination is gonna be to the rental page, and we're gonna send the current cells home. Okay. And we had to do all this because in order to actually you know, make a uh, booking and payment through Stripe, we need to know um, whoever registered as the seller has to actually be the creator of the listing here. Okay, so let's go back to our app and refresh. I'm registered as a seller and that my listings um, words are there. Let's just put that lower. I couldn't see it because it's hidden. Uh, by default, so I'm going to go ahead and refresh. So here we go. I'm registered as a seller. Here's my listings. And let's go ahead and just create a listing real quick. So it'll be um, amazing penthouse apartment. And let's add in an address. Let's just put in New York, New York. Number of guests, I'm going to say three. Price per night, I'll say $199. And I'm going to go ahead and create the listing. So there we go. We did that. And now there's a listing here for the amazing penthouse apartment. I'm gonna go ahead and open that in a new tab. And here we are, we have the amazing penthouse apartment and the price and um, we built this previously so we have our booking dates and then we can actually book. So now what we need to do is build out the Stripe functionality to book, make the payment and actually um, send the payment to the uh, host as well as take a cut as the platform. All right, so back in our bubble editor, let's go to our rental page and under this book button, we're gonna to wanna to create a workflow when someone clicks book. But before that, what we need to do is um, add the, actually for now, we're just gonna click book. I wanna focus on Stripe functionality. Later on, I'll add functionality that, um, you know, based on the dates we're staying, calculates how many days uh, the booking is for, and multiplies it by the price per night. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna do a simple book for the current you know, one night uh, price. And we're gonna go ahead and click Start Edit Workflow. So when book is clicked, why don't I first of all go back to the design and just purchase. Actually, yeah, book is fine. Book is fine, purchase and book. Uh, book is fine here. I'm gonna go ahead and start edit the workflow. And when we, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these because I was working on things earlier. So we're gonna create a new booking uh, actually, in this case, that's fine. No, nope, let's delete that as well. So for now, I just want to focus on Stripe. So we're going to do go here. We're going to go to Payment. And what we're going to do is um, charge the current user. So we're going to go ahead and say charge the current user here. And this is connected to our Stripe plugin here. So the payer email is the current user's email. The amount is going to be the current page is home, the current page homes price. The currency, US dollars. Um, name, I'm just gonna say, uh, let's insert data here. Why don't we just say current page homes title. Description, I'm just gonna say test. Image, leave this blank for now. Dynamic image, we can leave that blank as well. Descriptor, I'm just gonna say test for the statement descriptor. Here, authorize the charge only. Leave that unchecked. You would do that if you wanted to kind of do a hold on the charge, but in our case, we want to actually do the charge. Here, the payee of the transaction is another user. We are going to check that off. And the reason we're doing that is 
because it's a marketplace, what we're going to do is send the payment through to that um, host who registered as the seller, and then we're gonna take an app fee. So the, the transaction pay, what we're gonna do is go ahead and click the uh, current page homes creator. And this is why we had to build all of that logic into allowing current users to sign up and create a listing. So you need to make sure people are signed up, create a listing, register as a seller, and do all that in order to actually create a listing. Um, you could add logic into the app, for example, that doesn't let them create the listing until they've registered as a seller. So here we are, we have the app fee, and let's just go ahead, and this is where you would take 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever the marketplace's take rate is as the fee for running the marketplace. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is say current page homes price, and what I'm gonna do is multiply that by 0.15. So let's say we're taking 15% of the transaction here. And then we're going to not allow promotion codes. Let's just keep that unchecked for now, keep everything else unchecked. And that should be all we need to do here. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out and let's test this out and see if this worked. So let's go to our bubble app, let's refresh. And what I'm gonna do is um, go to this uh, listing, the amazing penthouse apartment, make sure you're on the listing that was created by the seller account that you registered and let's copy it and I'm going to open a new private window here and paste it in. And then what we're going to need to do is sign up or sign in. You need to be signed in with a different account than the one that created this listing. So I'm gonna say sethpaytest at email.com, put in a password, and I'm gonna go ahead and sign up. Okay, great, so here we are, I have signed up and let's test this out. So let's go ahead and click book. And here we go. So it says, pay either does not have a Stripe account set up or else has a privacy rule blocking access to social networks, which prevents this action from working. So this is an error that I was actually coming across earlier. And the solution I found was to go into your bubble app editor. We'll go into our um, data tab here, go to privacy and then under users here, what we're going to do is go ahead and check social networks here um, under access to the uh, user's email and the user's data. And later on, we'll do a little bit more research into um, what we need to turn off and on on our privacy settings. But by checking off this social network uh, privacy setting, we're able to um, get the Stripe integration to work here. So I checked it off. Let's go ahead and refresh. And we're in a new tab here. So let's go ahead and click book. And awesome. So here we are in our Stripe checkout here. And you can see we have 199 tests at the description. And what we want to do is so the email here you can see is automatically filled out because um, that is our user's email that we created in the app. And then for testing purposes, Stripe just has a test a card, which is 4242 and so on. And then make the expiration date any date into the future. And then any CVC should work. And then you can just go ahead and put whatever name you want and then just go ahead and put it in uh, address. None of that matters. And then when we click pay, it should process. And then it should take us back to our bubble app. And here we go, it says our credit card was successfully charged. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And now we're back in the bubble app. And nothing changed on the bubble app because we didn't have any logic to say, you know, successfully booked, anything like that, which we totally could. And you know, that's something that we'll build out later. But for now, I just wanna check to see, did that Stripe charge go through? So let's go back to our Stripe account and let's go ahead and go to our homepage. And we're on our test here. And let's go ahead and refresh. And here we are in test mode. And if we go to our connect, we can see under our account here, and we can see here that this account has a $163 payment here. 
it says 199 let's go ahead and click in and we can see there was a $35 fee so the application fees were $29.85 that was that 15% fee that we included and then there is a $6 processing fee here and the processing fee is the stripe fee and then if we go into our reports tab here on our home page of Stripe, and we go to home, we go down, we can see connect gross volume is 199. We can see net volume from sales is 29.85, and that's our 15% cut. Uh, so let's go ahead and just go back and let's try this one more time. So let's just refresh. Uh, actually, make sure you're on your private tab here, uh, which is the account that you made to do the payment. So let's refresh and let's just do it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and click book. And here we are, I'm going to do the same thing. And let's go ahead and click pay. So it's going to pay again, process, take us back to Stripe. And it was successfully charged, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And then let's go back to our Stripe account. And now we can see we have 398 as gross volume and 5970 as net volume from sales. So it's all working correctly. We've built out all the functionality we need to allow users to register as a seller, make a listing, and allow other users to go ahead, book a listing, and uh, the money will get split up between your platform and within and to the um, and the money will get split up to the your platform as well as to the seller. All right, awesome. So before we move on, I just want to make one more point here that there is another way to set up a Stripe Marketplace payment. And um, I'm just going to explain it real quick and maybe later on I'll do a tutorial on this, but for now, um, the way that I set it up uh, will work really great. But if we go to our workflow and we go here, if we want, we could uncheck the pay of this transaction as another user. And if we uncheck that, the money is just going to go to our own Stripe account. So here, under Stripe, instead of it going to connect gross volume, it'll go to our gross volume. And then what we can do is set up in our editor, uh, we would do a different you know, workflow. You could either do a button to press to make payouts, you could set up a uh, API workflow in, the workflow in the back end of Stripe to actually do these payouts. But what you can do is you can go and under payments, there's another action called transfer to seller. So what you can do is transfer the money from any specific charge and you would have the source charge ID and that would be saved in your database. Um, and that's something that you would need to set up. So there's a little bit more to set up here, but basically then you could hold all the money and then pay it out to the uh, uh, people in your marketplace whenever you choose or on our schedule every two weeks, every four weeks, um, whatever you choose. Uh, and that offers some advantages to a marketplace um, to hold the money. Uh, in our case, uh, this setup of kind of just paying them out as the money um, gets paid to us, it works well and, and kind of works just by checking this box and entering it in here. But I just wanted to go over the other way quickly of how you could set this up uh, to give you some ideas and get you thinking about other possibilities with Stripe and Stripe Connect. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, use custom states to build in logic to calculate the number of days that we are booking for, and then we're going to show the number of days, and then we're going to multiply the number of days we're booking for by the price per day, and um, build that into our checkout flow. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and double click on the check in um, uh, date time picker. Go ahead and click that information button on the top. I'm gonna delete what I had. And what we wanna do is add in a custom state. Now, what a custom state is going to allow us to do is save data on our page that is not saved in our database. So if you refresh the page, the state is wiped uh, clean, but when the user is on the page, selects the dates, we'll be able to do calculations with that information Custom states are really, really helpful. So here we have custom states. Let's go ahead and add a state and it's gonna be check in date and it's going to be a date. And then let's just go ahead and uh, say create. And then on the uh, second option here, 
go ahead and add another custom state. I'm going to delete it, and it's going to be the check out date, and it's also going to be a date in create it. Okay. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and add a text element here and add it below. And let's just type in uh, total nights and a colon, and then let's insert dynamic data. And this is where custom states uh, is really powerful here. Uh, oops, let's just delete total nights. So I deleted that. Insert data afterwards. Here we go. And I'm just going to see, you can see check out and check in. So we want to subtract the check out date from the check in date. So check outs value. And what we're going to do is just type in the minus. So we're going to do a minus here. And then what we're going to do is do check in and the check in value. And we're going to format as days. There we go. And then what we're going to do is add a conditional so it doesn't show up until both of these values are filled in. Um, and let's go ahead and define a conditional. So it's going to be when the uh, checkout dates value, it's not empty. And here, check ins value is not empty. We're going to do one more. And I want to do when check out minus for the value minus check in is the value formatted as days is greater than zero. And the reason I want that is because I don't want this to show up when either of these are empty or if it's uh, a negative value, which would mean the date ranges are uh, the check in date is after the checkout date. And you could also add logic similar to this, where if that is the case, you could have something pop up that says, you know, please uh, select the date range where the check in is uh, before the checkout. So there's all sorts of things you can do here in Bubble with conditional uh, values here. So what we want to do is say this element is visible when these criteria are met. And let's go back to appearance and uncheck visible on page load. Go ahead and exit out. And let's go back and refresh our page. And let's go to our penthouse here. And here we go. So we're here. Let's uh, just make sure that all of this conditional um, logic is working. So I'll select March 14th, and then I'll select March 17th. And three nights popped up. So let's see. One night, two night, three nights. Perfect. Um, and then just to show you, if we make this 25th to the 17th, it's going to be empty. Awesome. And if we go to the first, awesome. So it's all working correctly. And then let's go ahead and add a, um, a field here that's going to show the total price. So we go back to our editor and put in the total price right below total nights. So let's just first duplicate that, put it below. So I'm just copy and pasted. Here I'm going to say total price instead of night. And then what I'm going to do is do a formula here. So it's going to be the checkout value minus check-ins value formatted as days. And I'm going to multiply it by the uh, current page homes price. And let's go back and just refresh. So I got to select the 14th. I'll select the 15th. One night, 199. Two nights, 398. Four night, three nights, 597. So it's all working there. And now the last thing I need to do is actually pull that number into our booking tab. So here under booking, let's edit the workflow, charge the current user. And instead of the current page homes price, it's going to be the current page homes price times the checkout the value. And then what we're going to do is minus the check-ins value and formatting it as days. So that's what the amount is going to be. And 
we could do the same thing here. So we're going to say it's only when the current page home's price times the uh, checkout's value minus the check-ins value formatted as days is greater than zero. And the reason we're doing that is to prevent those negative. Uh, if it's a negative value, meaning the check uh, the number of days is negative, like the check out day is before the check in day. Uh, we don't want the user to go ahead and then pay a negative amount. It just won't work. So we're just going to add that um, uh, conditional there at the bottom. OK, so let's go ahead. Let's refresh and let's see how it works. Make sure you're in your private tab where you are the user that is making payments. So let's go ahead and choose a start date. Let's choose an end date here. So six nights, it's going to be over $1,000. Let's go ahead and click book. And here we go. So it pulled in correctly our $1,194. Go ahead and click pay. And it's going to push us back home. It's going to say it's successfully charged. And then let's go ahead and check Stripe. So let's go ahead to our Payments tab. Um, so we have our, uh, actually, let's go to Connect, sorry. Oh, and you got to make sure that you are in test mode so that you can see everything under test mode. So if we go home, we can see we just made a big payment. Gross value went up by a lot. We have our net volume. And uh, actually, one thing that we made a mistake here is our net volume in Bubble seems to still be pulling from the one night rate. So to change that, we just have to go back to our Bubble app. And here we go. And here, current page, proms, page homes price times 0.15, we actually have to uh, do a little bit more math there. So it's not times 0.15, it's going to be times the uh, checkout value minus um, the check-ins value formatted as days, and that is going to be times 0.15. There we go. So that's going to be the right formula to actually get the app fee to pull in correctly. All right, awesome. So now you've built out the ability for users to select the number of days that they want to book a property for. Uh, our app is going to calculate the price based on the price per night and the total nights that they're booking for. And then that's going to flow through our Stripe payment flow and calculate the new price based on their date.